So this sounds very important for you, that is uh, the protecting of uh, sources. Um, and this sounds like a very important uh, story for the walrus. What is it about this piece that, that, that you felt really embodied what the walrus was looking for? It seems to me the, the wider ethical, moral, and journalistic question is, um, is, is what to do with sources. And, um, and uh, you know, because we are reliant on, on, on sources and people who are willing to, in, in many, many instances, take a risk uh, to themselves, speak truth to power, uh, and to expose, uh, uh, whether it be corporate malfeasance or, or government um, uh, corruption or what have you, uh, to be a quiet whistleblower. Uh, I mean, you know, if you're gathering information, you're trying to uphold the, the essential tenets of democracy and you're trying to inform the public, you have to make a contract um, with these kinds of people. And, and what goes into that contract is all important. Um, I think if there's a, if there's a lesson uh, to be learned from this, evening's, um, from this evening's event, which, you know, was extremely heated, uh, and, and so it should be. Um, if there's a real lesson to be learned is that when you are uh, approaching or are approached by a source um, with uh, information that is not in the public domain, that is not readily available, um, you, must, you must say to that source, everything must be on the level. In other words, if you are passing off misinformation that has potentially catastrophic uh, 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 effects, as, as in the case of, of Marar Harar, um, then all bets are off. At a time when the media isn't exactly winning popularity contests in public opinion, isn't outing your sources, if you find they lied to you, a little like saying, sure, I promise to love and cherish you in sickness and in health till death do us part, but now that I find out you didn't exactly make clear how dysfunctional your family really is, and you lost your job, is the deal off? Aren't we giving currency to the notion that no matter how well-meaning we journalists may be, we're fundamentally opportunists? Surely, as a reporter, you don't give your word to a source lightly. You think these things out before you publish, not after. And surely, too, your word means something, come what may. Breaking it may even have legal consequences. There is that, that commitment that, that can be a legal commitment because revealing the source can have very serious consequences and not always just the loss of job. It could be much more serious in some cases. Um, and on the other hand, any time one journalist breaks a commitment, it has an impact on every journalist because the sources know what they know about protection from what they read and hear in the media. And if somebody is outed, they have good reason to fear that they may be outed. They're not going to be as willing to come forward and, and give the information that may be quite dangerous for them to give. I don't see my colleague Bob Ortega here. Bob is a, a faculty member at Ryerson who came to us this year from uh, uh, from uh, the United States. He worked for the Wall Street Journal for quite a while, did a lot of investigative work, wrote uh, the first book-length treatment of uh, Walmart and uh, Sam Walton. And he, um, in pondering this question, he told us, we, we teach a course together, and he told the class uh, earlier this week that um, he, his practice was actually to tell people up front uh, when they were requesting uh, anonymity that if the information they were giving him proved to be false, uh, they could consider that the, um, uh, the agreement was off and that he would be free to, uh, to disclose who they were. Good practice, it seems to me, a lot more ethical and moral, if you want to put this on an ethical and moral plane, um, to make that part of an upfront compact rather than uh, to uh, go back on your word after an agreement, uh, on an agreement that was, that was made, um, however uh, lofty and high and mighty the principle might be. Well, I just want to thank you very much. Uh, we very much enjoyed the debate, and we hope everybody reads the article. So thank you very much, Ken. My pleasure.